India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship, Young Turks turns 21 and we are back with a brand new season of Voices from the Valley. This season, we bring you stories from the front line of what's being called the biggest technological innovation of our times, generative AI. In this edition of Voices from the Valley, we hear from General Catalyst in two of its portfolio startups that are transforming enterprises and enabling employees with tools of the future. We put the spotlight on Glean and Eightfold.ai. Hailed as the chat GPT for work, Glean offers a generative AI search engine for enterprises. Glean connects a company's many different knowledge applications, be it Slack, SharePoint, Salesforce, GitHub, Google Drive or Outlook, and provides a unified search experience. What Google has done for search, Glean aspires to do for workspaces. Founded by former Google, Microsoft and Meta employees, the startup is among a dozen generative AI unicorns created since mid-2022. Currently in use at more than 100 global enterprises, Glean is making its name as the software app for all software apps. While Glean puts all the information an employee needs at the fingertip, 8fold.ai is changing the way an employee gets hired and grows in an enterprise. 8fold.ai's platform helps companies manage the entire talent lifecycle of every employee, starting with a fair hiring process. Vodafone began using 8fold.ai to hire more digitally skilled workers and women. US chip maker Micron used the software to turn off a candidate's last name or exclude the name entirely to cut race or gender bias. A unicorn valued at $2 billion, 8fold.ai is present in 110 countries with LG, Chevron, Bayer, Morgan Stanley and Starbucks in its clientele. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Young Turks. As we turn 21, we're back here in Silicon Valley to chronicle stories of Indian investors and startups that are on board the AI game. Uh, as we've been doing traditionally for the last 21 years, the effort really is to understand what's exciting, what's giving investors confidence and what founders are betting on. Today with me at the General Catalyst office in Palo Alto, Deep Nishar. Deep, it's great to be back here with you at the GC office and of course, two of your portfolio companies, Arvind Jain, the CEO and co-founder of Glean, uh, started in 2021 and you claim to be the chat GPT for work. I'll talk to you about that, uh, Arvind, in just a second. And also with us, Ashutosh Garg, the CEO and founder of Eightfold.ai, uh, helping clients that you service attain nirvana using <laughs> using artificial intelligence and, of course, part of the generative AI movement as well. But Deep, before I talk to you about what's happening with the AI party and, you know, is, is this, is this uh, overheating at this point in time, let's talk about the overall macros. And we've seen a big slowdown as far as VC funding is concerned in Q1, down almost 50% at this point in time. You're sitting on a lot of dry powder. Uh, are we at the start of the correction? Are we in the middle of the correction? Are we getting closer to the end of the correction? So, Shreen, great to be back on the show, and uh, congratulations on completing 21 years of uh, following and coming to Silicon Valley and talking to all of us. Uh, one fun fact before I answer your question, all three of us are ex-Googlers, and, ah. and we are contemporaneous, as in we, we all worked there, uh, you know, some 15 to 20 years ago together. So it's great to, that you brought the crew back together. I'm glad that we did. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to macro, you know, if we knew the answer, uh, we would all be out there uh, investing on that. Uh, I do believe that the, the worst may not already be here yet. And the reason for that is inflation, at least in the US, continues to stay stubbornly high, uh, as well as the fact that you know the excesses of 2021 are beginning to show in terms of indigestion at this point in time, but they could get worse from here. OK, if the indigestion is going to get worse, what is that going to result in? I mean, we're seeing markdowns across the board, including as your portfolio companies, some of the large companies uh, in your kitty. Uh, we've seen layoffs uh, happening at this point in time. If you believe the indigestion has only just started, what could it result in as we move forward? I think what the first thing that happens is the gap between value and value creation starts converging. So in 20 and 21, I think the gap sort of widened a little bit more than it normally does. In general, private market valuations are always a little mm. ahead of public market valuations because we are betting on a longer term trend and the growth and innovation in those companies, which would be a lot more than public markets. I think those trends are now converging a bit, but 
also the companies have grown over the last couple of years. So as you know, when you talk to uh, both Ashutosh and Arvin, you'll find out that those companies have not just taken the challenge but doubled down because of the value creation that uh, they have in their customer base. So what happens as far as your investment thesis and your investment strategy is concerned in an environment like this where you believe that more pain is up ahead? Uh, do you sit back? Do you sparingly invest? Uh, how are you reviewing your strategy? So our strategy uh, continues to be the same, which is find the best possible companies and the best possible entrepreneurs and enter at the appropriate valuation. So don't get over exuberant and don't get too stingy. Mm. And that's the way you generate long-term value. In our business, uh, many times the best value is created after the company goes public. And they can double, triple, even go 10 times. If you look at an Amazon, you look at a Google, you look at, you know, hopefully eventually Stripe, those companies always generate a lot more and have some of them generated a lot more value after they've gone public. And you and I talked about mm. this even last year. So the enduring companies uh, always endure the test of time. And that's what we try to look for at all times. What is changing right now is that we are getting a little bit more time and breathing room to really spend that time. You mm. know, in, during COVID times, a lot of investments happened over Zoom for all of us in the yeah. industry. And when times get a little tougher, what also happens is uh, more sanity ensures mm. in mm. the market and everyone sort of takes a pause. And that pause is very good, both for the entrepreneurs building the company mm and also for the investors investing in those. So companies. a long pause, is that what you anticipate? No, not really. I mean, we have been investing, uh, at least at General Catalyst, last year, this year, at a pretty steady clip. Uh, but valuations have rationalized, which is a great thing. And if you see, a lot of value creation happens during uh, the cooler periods mm. in the market, because the vintage of companies that come out yeah. during those times are the ones that are started by entrepreneurs who really care. Uh, and now we are also seeing, along with that, a compounding factor, which is this new step change in technology, mm. AI technology. Mm. It has been around for a long yes, time, yes. but generative AI over the yeah. last three to four years has now really come of age. And that's going to completely append some very large swaths of our economy. Yeah, I will talk to you about the generative AI and the AI bet that uh, that GC is making. And uh, you you want to be called as optimistic participants in this story. But uh, Ashutosh, I would understand from you as far as Eightfold is concerned, what are you hoping to solve for at this point in time within the HR space? Uh, absolutely, Shreen. First of all, thank you for this opportunity. Super excited to be at your show. Uh, this is my first time. My quick background is I'm a machine learning AI person by training. So I got my PhD in AI back in the days more than 20 years back. So AI is not a new thing for me. It's more around that it has become mainstream now. Mm. And really when we started the company in 2016, the very first question was that why are you guys talking about AI? And our thesis was that employment is the backbone of our society. If we can provide everyone a better career, better opportunity, we will make this world a much, much better place. And at the same time, every enterprise is dependent on having the right talent mm. to grow and succeed over time. See, times could be good, times could be bad, yeah. but if you have the right talent, you can make through it. If not, you will flounder. So that was our key thesis. And second thing we realized it is with the movement to cloud, mm. there's a lot more data that is available now. So amount of data that is available about people is more than ever. So we said that can we learn from the data of pretty much every individual in the world, every mm. profession out there? Mm. Look at their career trajectory, where they have gone, and use that to better understand what is people's potential. Not what they have done, but what they can do. Mm. Because take Generative AI. It's a new tool, new technology yeah. that has come into yeah. the market, right? If you start looking for people who know Generative AI, that set is very, very small. But if you start looking for people who can deliver on Generative AI, mm. that set is much, much larger. Mm. So what we are doing now with AI, that is what we have been doing over the last six years, is using data to learn everyone's potential, their capabilities, what is the learnability of their skills, and then sell it to large enterprises. Mm. So today we are being used by enterprises across 110 countries, across 25 plus languages, across 20 verticals, where enterprises are using us to hire the right talent, to grow, nurture the talent, upskill the talent, make sure their workforce is always future ready as the, these new trends come in, and while ensuring that they have good diversity. Okay, I'll talk to you about your plans as far as the future is concerned in a second. But, uh, you know, Arvind, uh, let, let's talk about uh, your journey as far as Glean is concerned. 2021 is when you really started. And at this point in time, you're hoping to do what as far as this chat GPT for work is concerned? Yeah, well, so actually we, we did start in 2019. Uh, Glean is uh, an AI-powered search engine for workplaces. 
It connects with all of your company's information that lives in many different enterprise applications and then give users, your employees, one place where they can go and ask any questions and it will bring the right information that they need to do their job. So that's what Glean does. So you can also think of it as, you know, it's a Google or chat GPT, mm. but for your business, for your people. Uh, we, so we started in 2019, like me and like as, as we mentioned before, uh, my co-founders co and I, we I spent a lot of time at Google before building in Google search. And we felt that, you know, in the, in the business world, it's really frustrating and difficult for people to actually find the information that they need to do their job. You know, people spend more than a third of their time just looking for information. Mm. And we felt that, you know, this problem had to be solved. So that's, that's, why, that's why we started okay. Clean. So you're hoping to solve the problem and improve efficiency for people in the workplace. Uh, you know, we just heard from Ashutosh on their client roster. Uh, who are the takers for, for yours? Yeah, so Glean uh, works with some of the world's best uh, large enterprises. Uh, we have more than 100 customers, uh, again, spread across like you know, quite a few in the United States and then, and then a few in you know, different parts of the world. Uh, all the companies that use Glean, uh, they, they bring the product to, uh, to all of their employees, and, and it's a general purpose tool. You know, it's actually, as you said, it's like chat GPT. You come there, whatever questions you have, like you know, you're trying to figure out how to write code, how to do your you know, figure out, you know, how to resolve this, you know, a, a complaint that a customer has actually filed, you know, um, you know, a case for whatever your problems are, like, you know, generally, like, you know, your work involves looking for knowledge inside the company, and that's, that's what we do and help people do their jobs faster.